everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to Karen Glasser Live. I welcome guests from all across the globe who entertain us, wow us and excite us. Today's show is sponsored by Hasmark Publishing International. Thank you, Hasmark. Whether you are here live or on replay, make sure to say hi in the comments and tell us where you are watching from. Today we are welcoming a very special guest, Mark Wilkinson, who is the author of the new book, Life Remix, to the author's spotlight. A little bit about Mark. As an international house music DJ and record producer, Mark Wilkinson was living a dream life. He was traveling the world, sharing his passion of music and enjoying success with a top 10 hit until one day at the age of 33, he collapsed in pain and was unable to walk for 18 months. I can't even, even imagine that. Diagnosed with an incurable disease, the challenges he experienced eventually led to depression, loneliness, bankruptcy, and suicidal thoughts. At rock bottom, Mark made a decision to remix his life and he now owns multiple businesses as well as working as a wealth, business, and life coach, author, and speaker. So without further ado, we're going to welcome Mark to the show. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, Karen, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm so excited that you're on. And first of all, let's just say congratulations on the release of your book, Life Remix. How does it feel to be this published author that you are now? It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Something that I've dreamed of for probably 10 years or more uh, about, you know, and book two probably needs to be a bit quicker, but this one was, has been a, lo a long dream. And uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed the process and, and I've tried a few times to write it and it hasn't quite panned out. And then this time I just got it right and it just flowed. It was amazing. So, you know, tell us a little bit about why you decided to write this book. I know this is actually your story. Um, why was it so important for you to tell this story? Uh, I want to help other people not go through the crisis that I've been through. I mean, you know, incurable disease when the doctor tells you that uh, and then bankrupt, uh, you know, from the back of that as right. well. It comes a really, you know, those were horrible, challenging moments at the time. Uh, you know, I look back at it now and I actually think to myself, well, they were actually blessings because they allowed me to change, to grow, to learn to try a different way to do different things. Uh, and so it was just it was just uh, a, an opportunity, I think, to help other people. That's the real basic behind it. I love people, you know, I'm, I'm a huge people mm -hmm. person. I'm a massive socializer, I'm a ex-DJ, you know, I still do a bit of DJ. So, um, you know, I love, I love bringing joy to people and, and I want people to learn, you know, and, and learn the basic strategies that I learned that I put in Life Remix to recover from a crisis. So, as I said, this is your story. You literally took everything that happened to you and you you became a success story, so to speak, of your own making. Um, so you had some amazing you have some amazing mentors. And I know that you were inspired uh, by the film The Secret, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful, wonderful movie. Um, what particularly inspired you about the movie that that you actually go out of your way to say, I'm inspired by this movie and this got me going? Tell me a little bit about that. I think the secret uh, was, you know, there's a great, there's a great phrase that says, uh, "When the student is ready, the teacher will come." Yeah. And I wasn't, uh, I, I hadn't been listening to my body for many years. I'd had stomach cramps and problems and basic early inflammation signs, mm -hmm. but I hadn't actually dealt with them. And I just continued doing what I was doing, and the addictions and everything else that are all documented in the book were all in there. Uh, and um, I really. Uh, so I went up for a detox in Scotland because I was trying to like work out my stomach problems and trying to sort out what was happening. And uh, an early mentor of mine, Brian, he's kind of like Yoda to my Luke Skywalker, if that, if you will. Uh, and he basically said, um, he said he gave me a DVD as it was at the time of The Secret. He said, "Here, watch this." I said, "Okay." I watched it once, took it back downstairs, and said, "Here you go." He said, "No, no, go and watch it again." And I was like twice in one day. Are you off your head, okay? So I went and did it, and then I tried to give it back to him again, and he said, "No, no." You need to watch that a hundred times, Mark. And I was a bit like, really? But something happened. The more I watched it, I, I, rec I recognized this earlier, but then the more I watched it, I was repetition is mastery as I've since learned. But the more I watched it and the more I watched it, I became very aware of Bob Proctor and Marcy Shymoff, who by the way, have both endorsed Life Remix, which is amazing. Yep. Um, but Bob Proctor said a dis-ease is two separate words and you must put a hyphen in there. But a doctor just, Eight, well, six months before that, or maybe less even, had said to me, bad luck, you've got an incurable disease, it's in your genes, you're always going to get it, take these drugs and you should be okay. But Bob was saying it's a disease and if you've got a disease hyphenated, then you cannot have an, oh sorry, you cannot have a disease in your body if your mind and your and your feelings and everything are at ease. So interesting. That was, 
yeah, that was that was kind of I was like, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, hey. mind blown, mind yeah, blown. Well, first of all, why have I never heard this before? And second of all, what? <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> So, I mean, you, you're mentioned, you're name dropping right now, right? You're name dropping. You said Bob Proctor, Marcy, Marcy Steinoff, and you've got other people that have uh, not just uh, spoken highly about you, but put your, put their name on your book. Talk talk to it. That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. I mean, I was talking to Hasmark just the other day to Judy, and she said that this never happened before. Uh, yeah. Bob's endorsed the book. Marcy's endorsed the book. Uh, Judy and Peggy McCall have both um, endorsed the book and the list goes on and on. I've got ex-professional footballers on there. I've got Harry Singer. I've got Kevin Green, who's a multimillionaire in the UK that I do some work with and, and, and really enjoy coaching with. Uh, I've got uh, numerous people, all, all, old DJ friends of mine, even my mum and my brother. Have put mm -hmm. Oh, well, they're, they're, that's the most, and that's the most important. But what do you think is the reason that so many great thinkers and are, are saying, I, I want to make sure that people, because that's what they're doing by putting their, their name on it. They want people to read your book. What do you think is their, their, their reason for that? I mean, it's a, obviously it's a great book, but what is it that struck a chord with them that they all came out of the woodwork to say, read this book? Well, what's interesting is, well, I've got to mention Danny Ramplin, who's one of the pioneers of house music in the UK. Who's put, he's, he's written a part one of the forward. Lewis Senior, an executive coach with Equilibria, who coached Chevron across all of the states and the world. Uh, you know, these guys have written parts of the forward to the book, as has Kevin. I think they've all responded to my energy over the years. You know, Danny's known me the longest. Then Lewis has known me uh, 10 years and Kevin's known me three or four years. And those guys have written forwards to the book. All these other people, you know, I've, I've, I've been through some tough times, you know, and there's times I've written in the book and there's people that have, one of my old DJ friends said, I was there for all the fun, Rocky. He was like, I was there for all the fun. And then I never knew how bad it got for Mark. And it's an inspirational yeah. read because I didn't realize. Do you so think it's, yeah. Do you think it's because you made yourself vulnerable? I mean, you literally put yourself out there in this book. You, you just, this is my story and learn from it. In uh, yeah, I mean, the, the first two or three chapters are, are literally, you know, Um, but then everything else is strategies, how I recovered from the, the disaster, from the collapse and, and, and the financial collapse and the physical collapse and everything. Uh, and all of these strategies that are in there, I'm not, I'm, it's not, I'm not some genius who's just come up with them. I've been taught them and then I've just channeled them out there and gone, well, here's my take on it. This is what I think that you can do. And, and mm -hmm. it's very timely because at the end of the day, the world's going to be responding and coming and out. The, yeah, exa exactly. And, you know, you said that you watched The Secret over and over and over again, not by your choice because they said, you know, you have to keep watching. Same thing. And, and you and I had several conversations about this in the past about Think and Grow Rich. That's another one that you cannot read it too many times. Would you agree? I mean, I literally open the book every year at the beginning of the year and I just, I read it just because. I'd say re repetition is mastery. I've got Bob's book here. I've got Louise Hayes book here. I've got Happy for No Reason by Marcy. I mean, I've got books I'm surrounded right. by incredibly talented authors because although the message can be very, very similar for all of them, they've all got a slight different right. way of taking it and slight different stories. And, and that's what I've done. I've said, look, you know, I'm a DJ, right? I'm a, I'm a man who made records. You know, people used to say to me, what's your purpose? I'd be like, well, I'd be like, oh, I'll play, I'll play a few records. Uh, I nearly dropped the books there. I said, uh, you know, I, I play a few records and people dance. I haven't got a purpose. That's all I do. And then before I started to think about it, that's when I started to create a life right. of purpose. So, okay. So the book clearly shares how you overcome challenges and make positive changes. Can you give us an example of one of those positive changes? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a couple of phrases that just jump out into my mind. Uh, one of them is if you knew the power of a negative thought, you'd never have another one, uh, which I think is a very, <laughs> it's just something I came up with because the pat the, the negative patterns are the ones that they, they're the ones that took me down into right. this pain and all pain has a message. And one of the other ones I would say is, is calm down and speed up. And what I found is, is the calmer I've become over the last 10 to 15 years, uh, you know, I cut out all the toxins out of my body and, and so I don't drink alcohol anymore and I cleared up, cleaned myself up completely. Uh, and uh, and what I found is that life is going quicker and quicker and quicker in a beautiful way because it's the pace of life is just, it's just quickened because I can do more. I have more energy, but the, it, I'm so much calmer. And that's a good piece of advice. Yeah, very good piece of advice. And guys, you heard it here first. 
Um, you know, so let's get back into the process of writing a book. I'm sure that people that are watching this maybe themselves have a book inside of them. Let's talk about how you write a book. How, ma did, how many hours a day do you write? <laughs> well, um, the absolute truth is in this book, I, I, I kind of tongue in cheek, I say this book's been 50 years in the making because that's how old I am. Uh, it's, been, it's been 10 years of an idea. Uh, it's been a year to write and six months to pr pr promote and now it's come, now it's come out. So, um, you know, probably book two needs to be a bit quicker, like I said. But I, I make sure that because I'm running multiple businesses and doing multiple things all the time, I just make sure that I've definitely got hours put aside. So a couple of hours during the week and three hours maybe on a Saturday morning. And I just I, I did that when I was in the corporate world, mm. recovering from the bankruptcy. And that's how I've got a master's now in uh, management and leadership. And I'm going to do a PhD next. It's something that I wanted. It's the journey from DJ to DR, right? To Dr. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's all part of it. But you, if you put the time aside and you get organized, uh, then things can start to flow a lot easier. So it's structure. So you literally put a structure in place okay. to write. So, so I have to say, right. I have to I have to pay homage here as well to my wife because I'm not the most structured bloke, right? Uh, I'm kind of energy and you know people and buzz and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, when I left my last corporate job almost three years ago, uh, I got home and my wife had put a big poster up saying congratulations. You know, like you know, and she said to me, "What about what are you going to do about this book?" Because I tried it a few times and it hadn't really worked. And she said, right, sit down. And she said, write me out, like, you know, timeline of everything. And then give me, you know, breakdown of everything. And then just turn. And somehow I look at it now. I'm, I'm kind of reading it now going, oh, this is this is actually good, you know. And it's like it's 14 chapters. It almost feels like I didn't write it. It almost feels like a separate. You know? Well, you know, maybe can you, like, loan your wife out? Because clearly <laughs> she, she did a good job with you. That That's, that's actually. So when you're writing, does it energize you or, or are you exhausted at, when you finish writing? Oh, no, I love it. I love it. I, I'm uplifted by writing. I'm uplifted. I, I decided what my purpose was, going back slightly to the purpose thing. Bob, Bob Proctor, Marcy Shymoff, all these people in The Secret, all the great teachers, everyone, always like, what's your purpose? What's your purpose? I was like, I don't know. And so I, I kind of put two and two together one day. I had a bit of a light bulb moment because I was in Manchester talking to some students and about 10 of them stayed behind to thank me for sharing my story in yeah. my mid-30s. And I got the same feeling, the same uplifting kind of like feeling of like those lovely 10 students saying thank you to me as I did when I had a thousand people on the dance floor like celebrating. The it's exactly the same feeling. And I just went, oh, right. I love to bring joy to other people. So if I love to bring joy to other people, then I started to develop my purpose into joy, knowledge, inspire, create. And that's where everything came from, you know. So do you have a tip that you would share one tip if, if you met somebody, you know, in a coffee shop or during the show, somebody writes you a message and say, what is one tip you can give an, an aspiring uh, writer to get started? And I'm going to put you on solo for that. I would say uh, it's very important, as I said about the structure, it's very important to then break it down into bite sized chunks. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you've just got to get it out onto paper. Nowadays with Word, with Microsoft Word, even on my Mac, you can hit the double hit the FN button and you can just speak it into Word. It won't punctuate it for you, but you'll get your ideas out onto paper. You know, later down the track, an editor can get involved. Other people can get involved. But you've got, if you've got a concept, an idea, a gift, you've got something you want to share, something that you think will help other people. And the biggest thing of all is add value you know find those pain points in people's lives and then add some value to other people's lives and things will be good for you i, I like to say see the need fill the need mm -hmm. right see the need and fill the need if you're just tuning in we are talking with mark wilkinson about his new book life remixed i am thrilled for you um, if you want to go pick up a copy of the book, which you should, you're going to notice that right in the comments right now, there is a link for you to go click and it will take you right over to the bookstore to pick up Mark's book. Again, congratulations on that. It is quite the accomplishment. So do you have an interesting quirk when you write? I've been told that all authors have something that they do that's different. 
from everybody else? <laughs> well, I would say that we're all unique. I mean, we're all utterly unique. You know, I think I think many people would be really down on themselves. I know before we spoke about people talking about writer's block and stuff like that. I mean, I, I've never I've never suffered with that. I've only done one book, though, but mind you. I mean, you know, Peggy McColl's done 19, so I've got a bit of work to do to catch up with her. Right, 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 um, right, right. But, um, you know, I think you are unique. You have a story to share. Uh, whatever's happened to you hasn't happened to other people, or if it has, it's happened in different ways. So you right. get out there and actually decide what your purpose is, hold your vision, and get your goals moving towards your, you know, take your steps towards uh, towards the achievement that you would love to achieve. Uh, right. and, and don't worry, you know, it's just uh, have faith, you know. And have fun, and have fun yeah. while you're doing it too. If it's not fun, I say, why bother, right? Yeah. Um, have you read a lot during this last year with quarantine, or you've been just busy doing what you do so well, and that's coaching, and you wrote your own book. Have you read any books? Do you have uh, a favorite book that you read in quarantine? I, I read a lot of books over and over and over again, and I actually use a lot of books in my coaching. So I've got James Allen, As a Man Thinketh, that I've been reading the Serenity chapter at the end to a couple of clients recently about the more serene you are, the more calm, calm down, speed up, right? But the more calm you are, the more people will be drawn to you and the more successful you will all be together. So I'm reading that. Marcy Shymoff is coming onto my show in a couple of weeks. So I'm, I'm rereading Happy for No Reason. So that's exciting. Um, and so, and Bob Proctor's it's not about the money because I've been listening to the audio book this afternoon uh, 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 while I've been out. Uh, it's it's literally, you know, you can't get enough of this stuff. You know, you cannot get enough of You've right. got to get that information through past your conscious thoughts and into your subconscious mind. So you just operate from automatically almost on a habit uh, because there's so many belief systems that can stop you. Uh, and, and you've got to get through those to be able to be creative, you know. Stop getting in your own way, right? <laughs> Stop getting in your own way. You mentioned that you have a show. Um, and so um, what's the show called? And once this, once we send this out to everyone through a blog post, we'll make we'll put a link in it to the show. But what is your show about? So I go live quite a lot throughout the week. Uh, I've got a show called Straight Talking on a Wednesday evening, 7.30 p.m. GMT here in London. And um, I, uh, I invite interesting people on there. Karen, you must come on there at some point. But uh, oh, <laughs> I, I invite interesting people to come onto the show and talk about various things. The last few have been some of my old friends from the record shop days and the DJ days, some reminiscing, mm -hmm. but then also some discussions about how to remix your life and how to get through challenges. Because, you know, every I think every DJ, when we were young, we didn't care. We didn't think about anything long term. We were just like having a party. And then all of a sudden, the reality kicks in for many of us. I mean, mine was, mine was uh, you know, disease and bankruptcy and nature's handbrake made me stop. But actually, everyone's got a story. So um, mm. you know, I love bringing out a story out of other people, you know, and, and I'm getting a huge response from it. And uh, I know people are really, really enjoying it. So that makes me feel good because it's part of my purpose to bring joy, right? So Right. Absolutely. All of our friends that you're watching here, whether you're live or on replay, um, you can follow Mark on Facebook at Mark Wilkinson Life Remixed. You can also follow him on Instagram at Mark Wilkinson Official. You can follow Mark on Twitter at DJ Mark Wilkinson. And of course, you must go check out Mark's site, his website at Mark Wilkinson uh, official.com. As I like to say, when I see so many of these call to actions and places to go, you're everywhere. And don't forget to go pick up a copy of Mark's book because you know you need it and you know that your story is so inspirational and it really helps people get off the dime and, and do something and change their life. Because, you know, you said something, at least I think is very important. What you think is what will actually show up. So if you think positive thoughts and you think positive in terms of forward moving, I agree with you 100%. You're going to you're going to get that support you need. If all you have coming out of your head is negativity, that's what you're going to attract, right? You can't have a positive, happy, healthy life if you've got loads of negative thoughts and beliefs and, and emotions. It just doesn't exactly. it won't work. <laughs> Exactly. You know, we're really excited here at Karen Glasser Live because we are now on the Roku channel. Uh, go ahead and click on the link in the comments when you see it and go check it out. Put it on your TV. You know you want to have Karen Glasser Live on your TV. I know I do. I certainly want to have it on the TV and it's very exciting. You heard it here first. Next week we, have, we are going to be also on Amazon Fire. So we're very, very excited about where the show is going. 
Mark, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know we had some challenges with this, so welcome back to the show. Uh, but thank you for being on the show and sharing your book. I know that I'm going to be following you like a fiend. I want to know where and what happens with you with this book. Again, congratulations. And to all of our viewers, we know that you have a choice as to how you spend your time. You chose to spend it with us, and we are thrilled that you do that. So go out and give somebody an awesome day, and we'll see you next time on the next Karen Glasser Live. Goodbye, everyone.